We had a good quarter with strong commercial and financial results. On one side, we saw solid growth in our deposit franchises across all retail segments, which funded a robust growth uh, in our core lending franchises. So we continue to go at a good pace to support the economies in which we're active. I'm especially happy with the progress we're making in Germany. In Germany, we've now reached the level of 10 billion of funded commercial banking assets, which is a nine-fold increase over the past five years. We've also grown our consumer lending business by one billion over less than two years in Germany. And we see actually enormous progress in evolving the German business from a strong deposit gatherer to a full-fledged universal bank. Now, I'm also pleased that the strong results over the first half year of 2015 has enabled us to announce an interim dividend for our shareholders. Innovation is an integral part of ING's Think Forward strategy, but we have to increase the pace at which we innovate if we are to keep up with the changing needs of our customers. Over the last quarter, we've launched several services to empower our small business clients to reach their goals. There's two examples I'd like to mention. In Poland, we're using advanced analytics to improve the process of loan approvals. And we've now supported 75,000 small business entrepreneurs with pre-approved loans to grow their businesses. But in Belgium, for example, we have teamed up with an online invoicing service, Koala Books. And that service actually enables the small business clients to improve their cash flow and therefore manage their financial position much better. I also think it's our obligation to support positive and sustainable change in society. A topic close to my heart is taking action on climate change. And ING contributes by helping our clients to make the transition to sustainable energy generation. This quarter, we helped Tenet, a Dutch electricity distribution company, launch a one billion green bond facility to finance their offshore wind farms. But we also finance a hydroelectric power plant in Indonesia, as well as solar powered telecom towers in Africa. The consumer trend that we're closely watching is the growth of the sharing economy. Airbnb is one of those examples, but we see more peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces appearing. And that's changing the public perception of what ownership is all about. Now, a recent ING International survey shows the expectations around the European sharing economy is for it to grow by one-third over the next 12 months. Looking at the Eurozone economy, we see recovery continuing in the second quarter. And we also see that domestic demand has picked up. Now, downward pressure on oil prices, partly as a result of the recent nuclear deal with Iran, is actually boosting purchasing power. But we see that effect wearing off. Now, interestingly, the whole turmoil around Greece did not affect consumer confidence nor business confidence. But we do expect that the negotiations around the new bailout package are going to be tough, so we are keeping a close eye on those developments. Now, I believe that a strong euro currency union is important for sustainable progress and prosperity in Europe. Thank you.